Hello, welcome back. We're now going to dive a little more deeply into our linearized model and try to see what it can tell us about the behavior of our, um, well, how our phase portrait looks around equilibrium points. And in particular, we're going to start to classify equilibrium points uh, depending on the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the A matrix in this linearization. And we're going to, um, going to, we're going to cover the type of um, equilibrium point that's called a node and also a saddle point. Um, so last time we said that as long as the real part of the eigenvalues of our A matrix were not equal to zero, and we're going to get back to why this is needed a bit later, um, then around our equilibrium point we could approximate our solution by, so that's just d by dt of delta x, and delta x was a variable measuring our deviation from that equilibrium point, was approximately equal to a times delta x. And this approximately equal to, all that meant was that the actual relationship, there's some higher order terms here, but as delta x gets very small, this term starts to dominate all of these, and so we can just approximate it by this. And this idea of dominating, if you want to get ahead and start trying to think why well, we need this, so why, if this was violated, might this term not dominate what was over here? But we'll get back to that soon. So last time we said that subject to this condition, we could approximate our solution near the equilibrium point by a linear system. And more than this, this implies that near that equilibrium point, our values of our variable delta x over time are going to be pro approximately equal to the solution of this linear ODE. And you remember, hopefully, hopefully you've seen um, linear ODEs of this form, and they can be solved in general by the matrix exponential. Um, so the general solution to this equation here is e to the a times t multiplied by the vector of initial conditions. And hopefully you've seen this before, it doesn't really matter if you haven't. Um, we'll just recall that e to the a t is equal, and so a here is a matrix. This is equal to i plus a t plus a squared t squared over 2 plus dot dot dot. So this is just the normal series expansion uh, definition of the, the normal scalar exponential function, but we've put in a matrix A instead. Um, and this is the definition of the matrix exponential. And if you want to see that this satisfies this differential equation, just differentiate this and substitute everything in, and you'll be able to quickly convince yourself that um, this is indeed the solution to this differential equation. Um, but Okay, that's something more general. We can now start to understand what's going on um, in terms of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix A. So let's just say, suppose that our initial condition, delta x0, is an eigen vector of A. So what does that mean? It just means that A times delta x evaluated at time t is equal to zero, so our initial condition is equal to lambda delta x of zero. So this is our eigenvalue and this is our eigenvector, so this is just our eigenvector equation. So what does that mean? Well, it tells us something interesting about this solution here. In fact, we can see that e to the a t times delta x to zero is equal to, well, to sort of work out what's going on here, let's just imagine that we multiply by delta x zero here. Well, this delta x zero, we have identity times that, so we have delta x0, and then we have plus a t times delta x0, 
plus a squared t squared over 2 delta x0, and so on. But what's this? This is just delta x0 plus lambda t delta x0. So here we've used our eigenve eigenvector equation, and we can just keep on doing that. If we do that here, we do it twice, we get lambda squared t squared over 2 delta x0, and so on. And what's this? This is just equal to identity plus lambda t identity plus lambda squared over 2 t squared times identity, so on, all multiplied by delta x, 0. But this is just the definition of the normal exponential, the thing that you're far more familiar with. So this is just equal to e to the lambda t delta x, 0. So here we've kind of very quickly recapped a way to understand the solution of general matrix linear ODEs in terms of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So what does this tell us? Um, well, let's just do an example. So let's say delta x dot is equal to, if we've linearized, it's going to be approximately equal to minus 1, 1, 0, minus 2. And here we've got our delta x1, delta x2. And this matrix here, it happens to have eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 equal to minus 1 and minus 2. And they have corresponding eigenvectors v1, v2 equal to this. So the first eigenvector happens to be 1, 0, and the second one happens to be minus 1. So what does that mean in terms of our phase portrait? Well, let's draw that on again. So our phase portrait, we have our axes x1 and x2. And let's just say this was our equilibrium point. So delta x is measuring distances away from this equilibrium point. And so let's just put in delta x equal to one of our eigenvectors. So this is saying that if delta x points in the direction 1, 0, which is an eigenvector, then our solution will be given by e to the lambda t times that eigenvector. So it will be this eigenvector times e to the lambda t. Lambda is equal to minus 1. So that means if we start here, as time progresses, the solution will approximately be given by e to the lambda t multiplied by this vector. Because lambda is negative, this term will just decay, and it will just tend in to the origin. And that would be the same if we started over here. As time passes, all that happens is this just shrinks down to zero. And similarly, if we come over here and we start like this, we shrink down to our equilibrium point. And this is valid as long as delta x remains small, and we've sort of fudged all the details to do with small. But um, so just in the region of that equilibrium point, as long as we're along the eigenvector line, our solutions will tend into the equilibrium point exactly like this. How about the other eigenvector? Well, this one's in the direction minus 1, 1. So in the direction minus 1, 1. So that's along some line. It looks like this. This is our other eigenvector. But what do our solutions look like? Well, they have this e to the lambda t again, but with a minus 2. So these will also decay in. So if we start somewhere on this eigenvector, as time passes, our system will tend in to our equilibrium point with rate e to the minus 2t. So now what happens if we start here? Well, we can rewrite this vector as a combination of this eigenvector 
than this eigenvector. So it's got this much of that eigenvector and this much of that eigenvector. And now just each bit will compress at its own e to the minus lambda t rate. So we start here, we've got this much of our slowly decaying eigenvalue, we've got this much of our quickly decaying eigenvalue, so actually we'll rapidly go along our quickly decaying eigenvalue direction and then we'll, this one will also shrink to zero but much more slowly. So we'll get a trajectory that looks something like this. So our component in our fast eigenvalue um, direction decays very quickly. In our slow one it also decays just a bit more slowly and we get some trajectory that looks like this. And we can start in all sorts of other points. So if we started here, we get something that looks like this. Again, you quickly decay along the fast eigenvalue. Here, it looks sort of like that. And we can just draw on lots more lines. But the key thing is that we've been able to understand what our phase portrait would look like purely in terms of the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, because the eigenvalues all had negative parts. Along every direction, we tended in to the equilibrium point. And we had two kind of dominant directions corresponding to our two eigenvalues. And the fast eigenvalue was shrinking faster than the slow eigenvalue. And that's what was giving us these sort of curved in shapes here. And this type of behavior is called a stable node. So this is a stable node. It's called a node because it has real eigenvalues. It's called stable because they both, they're both they both negative. Um, and we actually have two very closely related classifications. So if lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2 is greater than 0, then we have an unstable node. And thinking in exactly the same way that we were thinking here, all that would mean is if we started on this eigenvector, we would be pushed away at a rate e to the lambda t. It's just now the lambda is bigger than zero, so this term grows as time goes past and it will push us further away. Similarly with this, um, we start near on this eigenvector, we just get pushed away. And given anywhere else, well, we grow along our quick eigenvector far faster than we're growing along our small eigenvector. And so if we just flipped all the signs or put a minus sign in front here, we'd get exactly the same phase portrait, but with all of the arrows pointing the other direction. So this is what's called an unstable node. And very closely related to this, we have the case. So if lambda 1 is bigger than 0, which is bigger than lambda 2, we have what's called a saddle point. And it's worth uh, drawing that out as well. So we'll just do a little sketch here. So here we have x1 and x2. And suppose this is a saddle point where we have two eigenvectors. Say one is that direction and one is that direction as before. And one of them has an unstable eigenvalue and the other one has a stable eigenvalue. So if we happen to lie exactly on this eigenvector, and this is the stable one, we would tend into the equilibrium point. And if we happen to lie exactly on this eigenvector, because it's unstable, we'd be pushed away. And everything in between is some combination of these two. So if we start here, we have a stable component going this direction and an unstable component pushing us this way. So we get something like this. And similarly, we get something like this here, something like this here, and something like this here. And this is an unstable equilibrium point. And in short, there is this very special direction um, where we will tend to our equilibrium. But if we were just pushed even a tiny bit away, we would uh, be, be forced on, we'd get a component in the unstable direction and we'd be pushed away from the equilibrium point. So this is classified as an unstable equilibrium and it's termed a saddle point. Um, so next we get on to complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh -huh.